Welcome, everybody. This is Scott. I'm Vegas Horse Pools. I'm going to have a phone call today here with uh, Munchkin. We're going to talk about the Blackjack Ball, the big event held every year in secret here in Las Vegas. I asked Munchkin if he was willing to let us record this, and of course, um, he was willing, and we'll uh, be able to talk about 98% of it. We're going to have to hold back the other 2% for the after show. But Munchkin, I want to welcome you here, and I want you to tell us everything that you can tell us, that you're allowed to tell us, about the Blackjack Ball. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it was this weekend. Um, the Blackjack Ball, this was the 26th. Um, I, I And I would say annual, except we missed one year at COVID. Um, it was created by Max Rubin, who wrote the sort of iconic book, Comp City. And uh, it started out back, all the blackjack teams would come to Las Vegas for New Year's Eve. And so he thought, while everybody's in town, why don't we have a big party? And so it was traditionally the weekend after New Year's, New Year's. And all of the blackjack teams would come. And initially it was at Max's house. And it's grown over the years. And two years ago, we started a 501c3 charitable organization. So um, the idea being that all of the people who come to the Blackjack Ball have benefited so greatly from gambling, this would be a way to give back to people who have really been hurt by gambling. So we partner with an organization, it's a different organization every year, and we make a donation to, uh, it, this year it was the National Council on Problem Gambling. So that's where it is now. It, so we, we've grown the number of people who come. The early days, there'd be about 30 or 40 people in Max's basement. And this year we had 140 people at a large venue here in Las Vegas. And it's a sit down dinner. And, and we've also expanded to really try to include professional gamblers in other areas. So we did have a lot of sports betters. We, we have the biggest horse race, horse racing betters in the world. Um, and you know, it's just a fantastic night because for so many of us, it's a chance to see people that we only get to see once a year. And it's really kind of a fun event because we we have this competition, which um, has sort of this 21 question trivia test. And then the, the top five scorers on the test go up to a final blackjack table where there is a skills competition. And uh, oh, and we also each year induct a new person into the Blackjack Hall of Fame. And uh, this year, it was a woman named Maria the Greek who ran one of the largest blackjack teams in the world. And, um, you know, she was the, the person who ran that team. So, yeah, that's kind of what it is. Well, I want to I ask you a question. You know, Spanky and I went last year. We were unable to attend this year because of all the activity going on with uh, Spank Odds this week because there's some big changes going on right now that we're trying to pull off. But one of the things I thought was really cool last, last year when we went was that competition. And I remember a friend of yours named Daryl won it last year. How did that competition play out this year? Um, well, uh, it, it, first of all, it was, uh, <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, but, um, the first <laughs> now there there is some drinking that goes on at this event uh there you know it is an open bar so the first competition is a skill of memorizing cards and i spread a deck of cards and the players have 30 seconds to remember as many cards in a row as they can and they each have their own deck and they pull, you know, the first card out and everybody puts it face down. And then we all turn them over at the same time. And, and we work our way through the deck this way to see who can remember the longest string. 
there, there were two people who missed the very first card. <laughs> so um, another uh, very interesting thing about the final table was, uh, now a lot of the questions here involve on the quiz involve blackjack. And, and there are many that don't. There are other things. But uh, one of the people that got to the final table was a woman named Virginia, who is uh, Rufus Peabody's girlfriend. And she has never played a hand of blackjack in her life. <laughs> so she ended up already in third place because two people were eliminated <laughs> that couldn't remember one card. Uh, and the, the next competition was uh, you have two decks of cards and I remove three cards from your deck and now you're supposed to count down your deck and tell me what those three cards are. Not exactly what they are, but the, when you're counting cards, you're keeping track of the ratio of high cards to low cards. So, you know, your answer might be there should be three neutral cards or one high card, one low card and a neutral card or something like that. Well, you know, again, Virginia had never even played a hand of blackjack, knows nothing about counting cards. So she's going through the deck very slowly and she realizes that she's going to be slower than the other two guys. So she just says, okay, I'm done. And I said, okay, what are the three cards? And she goes, uh, eight of hearts. <laughs> and I said, no, you, you don't have to name the cards exactly. <laughs> just, you know, anyway. So she ended up in third place, which I think there was about $4,000 in the Calcutta on her. I mean, at, wow. for the winner of third place. So, uh, yeah, we have a Calcutta auction for all the, uh, the people. So whoever bought her, which might have been Rufus, but I'm not sure. Um, I would take that bet. I would take that bet. Uh, well, I think she was part <laughs> of the field. So it was whoever bought. So, you know, there are teams, just like if you've ever done a golf Calcutta or, or a backgammon Calcutta, you know, there are groups of people. And then er anybody who's not in one of those specific fields is in the, I mean, in teams is in the field. So mm -hmm. uh, I believe she was in the field. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, the winner of the final table was Frank B, who many sports beater, sports bettors are familiar with. So. I'm a little uh, disappointed that Frank B didn't announce it to our group since he's a member of our group. I think that would have been something he could have told us. I'll have to give him a hard time about that afterwards. The Calcutta I thought was fascinating. Again, my information's a year old since I didn't make it this year, but all the jockeying that goes on after the Calcutta about trading pieces here and there. <laughs> yeah. That is, yeah. That is crazy. And the well, number of people that go crazy betting for somebody. Because an yeah. auction gets that competitive spirit. And you're like, no, you're not going to beat me. But then after the Calcutta, then you go talk to that person. And then you still get a piece of it. So how, <laughs> well, how maybe, did that work out? Maybe, maybe, maybe right? right? But, although, if you are one of the players in that team, you do have the right. They have to sell you some piece, right? Yeah. You know, you have to be able to do that. But we're going to completely revamp the, the uh, competition next year. Uh, I felt like it went on too long. And, um, uh, and, and so I think we're talking about sort of head to head competitions uh, for different skills. So for example, uh, Daryl, who you mentioned, um, who won last year, what has sort of been written about in blackjack books because he was known as the fastest card counter. He could count down a single deck in eight seconds. And so our idea is to have competitions where people will say, I want to challenge Daryl to count down a deck. And then those two people will go up on stage and people will be able to bet on, you know, and I'm sure maybe there will be some prices set, like maybe this guy is plus 120 or, you know, or whatever. Um, so we're we're trying to figure out how to make the competition go much faster and much more exciting next year. So um, I, I actually love that. And I'll tell you right now, I'm going to clear my schedule next year. I hope Spanky doesn't release another product next year during this week. 
so that I'm going to be able to go to the blackjack ball. But I love betting matchups. That would be a lot of fun. And yeah. with the quality of the contestants, it could be a really, really good time. The problem is with that many advantage gamblers in one room, I just worry about somebody uh, throwing it. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I, I, I mean, here's the other thing. You know, we're going to go to people ahead of time and explain to them, you know, uh, look, you're, you know, these are the competitions. What do you want to compete in? I guarantee you, if we go to Daryl and say, do you want to complete compete in this competition? He's going to practice. And, and we want him to practice. We don't want somebody to get up there and try to count a deck. I mean, Ed Thorpe, right? He's 92. It would be great to have him get up there and, and count a deck or whatever. And, and, you know, everybody has an ego, right? Yeah. They're not going to want to get up there and, and either they will say, no, nah, I don't want to compete because I plan to do a lot of drinking. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or, But if they are going to compete, they're going to practice, you know, and I can't see them, you know, what, you're going to try to screw your buddy at the table to, and, and you know, the vast majority in of people in this room are very successful and have no need for the money they might make by, you know, throwing a competition to, you know. Yeah, but it would be a good laugh. It would be a really good laugh. And I fully agree with you. The amount of money that I saw there last year was actually frightening when they started pulling out cash to pay for those Calcuttas. Well, there's there like, also there no several money. billionaires. In the yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Right. Actually. Yeah. A couple of them there that I saw. But yeah. can can you tell talk to us a little bit about the Hall of Fame voting? I know you've already given us the winner, but no, I I, I told you who won the final table. I told oh, you before we started the the, the oh the before latest, we started. Okay, yeah, yeah. The latest inductee into the Blackjack Hall of Fame is Maria the Greek, and uh, she ran a. a or, or did we already say this? Yes, it I doesn't did. matter. Right. People don't want to listen. They don't have to listen. I don't yeah, care. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm enjoying myself. She she ran a very huge blackjack team and and uh, so uh, she she's been on the ballot for several years and she finally made it in and and that's that's great. So that is good. So I know I remember last year. Did you have an, any entertainment outside? You had a guy last year uh, that was showing kind of like tricks on how to cheat. Yeah, we had uh, a magician named Jason Englund, who people in the magic world all know Jason. Um, Jason was there this year, but he got there too late to actually, uh, you know, do any demonstrations for people. So um, although he did some, you know, at, at the tables uh, over dinner a little bit and uh, uh, yeah, so he was there, but uh, he, he didn't really uh, perform. Yeah. He, last year, he sort of demonstrated how you could get cheated at blackjack mm -hmm. mostly or at poker just some of the different techniques that um, cheats use to, you know, take your money. Yeah. I, like I said, I hate it that I couldn't make it this year and I'm going to do everything I can to make it next year. If, if I get lucky enough to be invited again, it was quite an experience. And it was one of those bucket list things because the, I don't, I don't want to name any names here, but there were some people there that are huge that I'd never had a chance to be in the same room with. Yeah. Um, like like my uh, that attorney, a person that I'm a big, big fan of from your from your uh, gambling with an Ed show. I won't say his name, but everybody knows who we he can is. Say his name, Bob Nersessian. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm he, a huge fan of his. Yeah, he's and, in the Blackjack Hall of Fame, so you know. Okay, that's probably fair. We could probably say his. And there were several other people there that um, I, I won't mention names. I'll let you do that. Well, no, but we can say that the biggest betters in the world are there. I mean, or, well, a guy who I think is the biggest better in the world, uh, you know, is Tony Bloom, who has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Star Lizard. Uh, he was there last year. He wasn't there this year. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the biggest players in the world are there. And, you know, and people know that you can't be the biggest player in the world at Blackjack. You, you know, there's, it's just not a big enough casino <laughs> to be able to bet the kind of money that can be bet on sports or horses. 
Well, since you said it like that, Mattress Mac, I thought that was very interesting, getting to actually see him in person last year. Did he make it this year? He did not, actually. Did I not. don't know why not, because, yeah, he, he's made it the last couple years, and um, and he likes coming, so... Uh, and you know, he also owns horse races. I mean, uh, horse horses. Um, well, he so seemed like a really great guy. Like I said, I had a great time and I was out to lunch on Monday with one of my buddies from Phoenix named Curtis. And he said, he went up to you and he was giving you a hard time about willing to do a video with me because you're not allowed to show your face on camera. And I said, much going to do it for me because he's retired. And Curtis didn't even give me the line I was expecting about, You've retired 10 times and you'll probably unretire 10 more. Because well, yeah, that's true. I, I'm sort of forcing myself uh, into retiring from casino games, right? Okay. Because, um, and, you know, even, even in the past, uh, when I was playing in casinos, I had a number of times people recognize me from my voice. So I learned I had to just not talk at the table. <laughs> um, and, but now, you know, I'm, I'm showing my face. So, but, you know, uh, speaking of un unretiring, uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of just like Michael Corleone. Every time I think I'm out, they drag me back in. And now, uh, it looks like I'm dipping my toe into sports betting. So, um, so, I mean, that was actually fun to talk to all the sports betting people there at the ball and, and uh, you know, just it's it's fun to investigate something new, learn about something new. And, uh, you know, it, whenever you start something new, your learning curve, you know, goes up very quickly before you start leveling off. So I'm still at that stage where I'm just trying to learn things and uh, negotiate these stupid apps we have here in Nevada, uh, you know, um, it, it, you know, if I was going to do this seriously, I think I would have to move to another state where you can, you know, use, use a computer, but, um, and, and every other state that has sports betting has better opportunities than Nevada anyway. But, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Sports betting is really, really hot right now. And I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun trying to figure out how the markets move. I got to say, I have fun every single day with it. And I'm glad you're getting involved a little bit into it. And we got to talk a few minutes before we started here. You're going to do great in it. And hopefully I'll be able to show you a few tricks. And then you can tell me the rest of the story. Because you've been a huge, huge influence in my gambling life. And gambling with an edge going off the air just still kills me because mm -hmm. of all the stuff that it gave me that I would never have any access to if it wasn't for you running that show. And I just remember, I still will never forget the first time you were a guest and I immediately sent you a message and like a fool, you responded and look at where you are now talking to me today. <laughs> you could have got out of this whole thing if you just didn't respond 10 plus years ago. So it was kind of fun. Yeah, well, yeah, and, you know, and um, the new podcast that I have, Life is a Gamble. There um, you go. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm still talking to gamblers, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm talking to other people, too, because I want to really expand it. But, um, you know, I know a lot of gamblers. <laughs> so, um, you know, well, that, we'll be that, that is a really good point. And that might, might there's one thing I want to talk to you about first. But I want to go to that statement next. The first thing I'd like to see is, did you run into any sports gamblers at the Blackjack Ball that you want to talk about here and let people know? Uh, what do you mean? Let, let them know what? I mean, I talked to a lot of, a lot of gamblers there. You know what? Here's, here's one thing that struck me. Um, my impression, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe it's just a sample of people who came to the ball. My impression is that there are very few originators. Like, it just seems like there are a lot of guys <laughs> making a lot of money in sports that either are moving money for other people or, you know, hustling bonuses or, or you know, scalping things like that but um 
you know, I mentioned Rufus. Obviously, he's an originator, but it just doesn't seem like there are that many. Am I wrong? I don't think so. Hmm. Um, I think there's a very small number of originators that um, that actually make money. The most of the money gets gets made, I think, in the middle. People like you're talking about, people that move the money, people that make the market straight, those kind of people. I think that's where the money really is. And that's where all the fun is, too. So that's kind of like where I like to hang out, you know? I mean, I don't have a model. I don't um, I don't pretend like I know who's going to win any game, except in Nebraska's a lock this weekend. It doesn't matter what week you're listening to this. Nebraska's a lock on Saturday. Uh, but that's the only, you know, that's that's the problem, I guess. And the great thing about our ecosystem is there's a little bit of peace in there for everybody. No matter what you do, top down guys can get their piece, bottom up guys get their piece, movers get their piece. The people who work hard basically get 90% of the money, though. So it really comes down to who works the hardest, at least from where I'm setting. Well, uh, maybe we can answer some questions for people like me who don't know anything. Like, if you were an originator, do you know what? What's, what's the deal? Like, what's the standard deal if the originator, you know, he doesn't have a hundred outs. So I've asked this question and the answer I've gotten is everything you can possibly imagine. I've heard free rolls. I've heard 50, 50 splits. I've heard 20, 80 splits. There pretty much is no limit to the answer to your question. Wait, 20, it's, 20, which way? Yes. I've heard both. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's yeah, no number. Crazy. There's no number that you can tell me that I haven't heard. Because that part of the business I'm not involved in because I don't have an originate. The originators that I deal with are friendly originators, meaning we're kind of on a team together. Uh-huh. So, so it doesn't deal with those kind of percentages, which I'm very, very lucky with. So, yeah. But like I said, I've heard the free roll one, which is the most fascinating one to me, because you've got to have an awful lot of trust if you're the one putting up all the money and you don't even know exactly that the person has the edge they're claiming. So it's a very risky business. It kind of reminds me of staking somebody in a poker tournament because I mean, they could, they could be a terrible player. They could, uh, they could have a great run and convince you they're a great player. It's just, it's, it's so hard when you're going to do business with somebody to make sure that both sides get treated fair. Personally, that's why I try to have as very few people that I deal with as possible because I don't want those kind of, uh, I don't want those kind of problems in my life, but it definitely limits my income. Oh yeah. And I just found, you know, from the, from the blackjack world, I, I should say from the casino world, because, you know, we played a lot more games than blackjack, but, from the casino world, even though certainly I had money stolen from me, skimmed from me, you know, scammed from me, I feel I made a lot more money because I always had partners and teammates and uh, and things. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's okay. So, so is there something? So next year, when the blackjack um, ball gets announced. And you start handing out invitations. Tell me why a sports better should send you a message and say, please invite me. What kind of sports better would, would do the best at the blackjack ball? Do the best uh, network for themselves personally. Oh yeah. Yeah. Networking. Oh, well it's very much like bet bash in that you're going to meet like the top professionals in the world. And, you know, and, and I can't tell you, I I mean, there are so many guys that I hear, oh, you know, this guy is now betting X for that guy. And I'm like, how does he know that guy? Like that guy lives in another country and is one of the biggest players in the world. And it'll be like, oh, he met him at the blackjack ball. You know oh, what I mean? Cool. So, uh, I, I mean, I, b- trust me, first of all, um, you you don't ju- just because you want to go does not mean you get invited. 
and right. and and nobody who works for a casino can be invited. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, if somebody did that to me, messaged me and said, you know, hey, I'd really, I mean, I get these messages a lot, actually. I'm sure. I'm um, sure. You know, the, the first thing I'm going to do is start asking people, you know, who is this guy? Do you think he would be a good fit? You know, does he have a good reputation? You know, that kind of stuff. I completely understand. And I, and I figured you got tons of those messages. So even though people are going to hear us say that, I don't think it's going to get you that many more messages than you're already getting flooded with. But I do want to. And you know what? Some people are just not very social. They don't feel comfortable in a room, you know, at, at a party like that. To they they can't just go up and say, "Hi, I'm Bob," you know, and and um and start a conversation. So so it's not you know it wouldn't be for everybody anyway. But um, very true, and that is a perfect transition to what I want to talk about next. And I don't think I warned you I wanted to discuss this, but I still do. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about networking because what you just said is a really hard thing for me. I'm an introvert. I'm not an extrovert like you are. I have a real hard time going up to somebody who I've never talked to before, even though I know everything about them. Okay. It's hard for me to go up to them and to start that opening line. I love it when people come up to me because I don't have to go up to them. So it makes it so easy for me. So remember, when you and I were together at Bet Bash 2, let's go back to Bet Bash 2 for a second. Um, you were introducing me to everybody because everybody knows you. Well, that makes it easier, right? So you don't have to approach somebody by yourself cold and just walk up. If you know somebody that knows that person, you can always just say, hey, would you introduce me to them? And that, that can open a conversation for you. But that the other thing... What you just said, you love when people come up to you. Well, just think that they probably love when people come up to them. So, you know. Uh, that's a harder stretch for me because yeah. I just know how easy it was for me at Bat Bash 2 because you took me up. Well, you introduced me to John Wilson and then tried to explain to me who he was, which I thought was hilarious a couple of hours later after I finally understood the whole story. But it was so great to have you as a wingman to just – take that pressure off me because that's something I can't do. I have yeah, a we'll really have Spanky hard... do it for you next year. Well, the pro <laughs> here, well, here's the problem. Here's the problem with Spanky. I'll just tell you. He's really busy at Bet Bash. It's the same problem I had with you at Blackjack Ball last year. You were too busy to guide me around. Yeah. Because you had yeah, other yeah. stuff going on. So but I Spanky some... won't be busy at if the he's at the Blackjack Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I guess kind of like you helped me at the at uh, Bet Bash number two. So that's a good point. I just somehow I need to find a way on the Blackjack Ball Day and on Bet Bash Day to switch from an introvert to an extrovert. And all the only thing I can do is in my mind, I keep saying, What would Munchkin do? What would Munchkin no, do? Please. And try to do that. Please. <laughs> Because I, I, it's really a struggle for me going up to people. I mean, there's three people sitting at a table, and I want to talk to two of them. The third one, I'm not <laughs> sure who he is. How do I interrupt that conversation? I mean, well, yeah, I mean, that's a problem because you don't want to interrupt the conversation. You probably want to wait till it's over and then, you know, and then introduce yourself or whatever. Maybe take some drugs. I hear ecstasy <laughs> uh, makes you more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to have my whole facilities when I'm uh, discussing <laughs> things because I got to tell you, it's valuable that you, the people you meet and the more people oh, you meet. Now you've argued with me about this for years, but I'm going to say it again. Let you argue again. If I wanted to double how much money I made next year, all I got to do is double my friends. It's a simple number. The yeah, number of friends. I, 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 I don't think it's uh, quite that correlated, but uh, it certainly appears to be to me. It certainly does. Every time I get another friend, my income goes up. So yeah. what I'm looking for, just a couple more friends. And then as soon as I get them, I want a couple more friends. I It's big in my world. But I just, do you have any good networking tips for anybody that happens to be listening? There's probably only a couple listening still. 
But well, for me specifically, what would you what would you say that I'm doing wrong and I could do better? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, we we don't want to turn this into therapy <laughs> session. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're doing fine, right? You're doing fine. You're making tons. If I had your money, I'd burn mine. Uh, so you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't need to worry about what you're doing. You're doing fine. Yeah, I just the networking. I just need. I just need a little more work on. So I try really hard, but it's not it's not an easy thing for me being an introvert. But um, I just think I just think it's a huge advantage you have in this world is um, is being an, an extrovert and being able to talk to just anybody. And it's so cool being able to walk through a room with you, though, because literally everybody knows you, which is nice. Very, very nice to go with, because then yeah. they suddenly think, well, I must be somebody important because I'm hanging out with you. So that's really oh, cool. please. <laughs> Well, I think I think we're just about to the end here. Um, is there any closing comments you want to make about networking or blackjack ball or anything in the at all in sports betting you want to end this with? Um, no, no. I mean, you know, just uh, you know, for the people that I'm reaching out to, realize I'm a complete newbie and I have a lot of dumb questions still. So. Um, yeah. Everybody, everybody's still learning every day if they're getting yeah. better. So I wouldn't feel bad about that at all at all. But to wrap this up, I just want to say, if you have any questions about spank odds, you can reach me as a DM on Twitter. I'm at spank odds. If you have any questions for me, my uh, personally, you can send it to me at Vegas horse pools. Of course, Richard is on um, Twitter. He's at RWM21 on Twitter. Reach out to any of us. I want to thank everybody for your time. And if you enjoyed the podcast or the uh, recording or whatever you want to call this crazy call, uh, please give us a like and maybe subscribe on the YouTube and uh, we'll put more of them out. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much.